Good morning, Bimblers. Evidently, the gods of Bimble were listening to us last week when I said that it was always too windy in Bangor. We haven't been able to go and see Thomas Telford's bridge at Menai. But this week, the weather is perfect. Six mile an hour winds, that's nothing. Beautiful sunshine. I'm not even wearing my big coat today. So we're back in Wales. Welsh Bimble. What's Bimble in Welsh? It's probably still Bimble, isn't it? I'm like a boat seeking missile wherever there's a large collection of boats you're very likely to find me I'm here at Port Penryn and nowadays it's used for pleasure boats people who own yachts and a few fishing trawlers but back in the 1700s this was the main port for exporting slate back then the Penryn slate quarry was the largest slate quarry in the world and in 1770 it was bought by the Pennant family and they lived in that big castle we seen on the skyline on the way in and they decided that they needed to build a harbour here to export out all that slate the main pit at Penryn Quarry was one mile long and 370 metres deep and back in the Victorian times there were 3,000 men working there but that number was slightly diminished in 1868 Mr George Douglas Pennant was standing for the Member of Parliament for Carnarvonshire. He'd already been the Member of Parliament in the last term and he was hoping to go for a second term. But he didn't win. And somehow he found out that 80 of his men hadn't voted for him. And those 80 men got sacked from the quarry. 
George Douglas threw all of his toys out the pram and seen his arse over it. By the 20th century, the slate industry had wound down quite a lot. Most of the slate was being dug out in China, and these days, the biggest exporter is Spain. But Welsh slate is still considered to be the best slate. And Penryn Quarry still digs out some of the slate, but there's only about 200 men that work there now. But they don't dig out enough of it to warrant having a whole harbour for it. So they just filled it full of boats for me to perv at. And they've got a concrete barge. See? I do love a good pay me. I'm determined to visit everyone in the UK. And this is a good and this is Garth Pier. This one was built in 1896 by a man named JJ Webster. Or to give him his full title, John Joseph Webster. He was apparently a very accomplished bridge builder. And he built a swing bridge in Little Hampton in Sussex, which is now gone unfortunately. But he also did some repair work to Conway Suspension Bridge and the Menai Suspension Bridge, both designed by Thomas Telford. More on that later. The pier had a grand opening ceremony and it was opened by Bangasaurus Loser, George Douglas Pennant. And like most of the great piers, it had a double function you could walk down to the end of it and enjoy the sea air but it was also a place for steamer boats to dock and services were run by the Liverpool and North Wales Steamership Company and they would have services going between Liverpool, here, over to the Isle of Man even to my beloved Land Udno in fact the main steamership that used to go between all these places was called the St Tudno which as you'll know from watching some of my videos is where Land Udno gets its name it literally means the village around the church of St Tudno I would love to go between all these different seaside locations by steamership in 1974 we nearly lost this pier Aravon Council wanted to demolish it because they said it was too dangerous but Bangor City Council stepped in and made it grade two listed. And they invested nearly a million pounds in it to get it back up to the shape it's in now. And it's very wonderful, it has a cafe on the end, lots of places to get ice creams. You can buy your bait for crab fishing. What more do you want? With a simple frame of mind and a little time You can protest all you like Why won't you 
figure it out Figure it You know I talk Let's never speak of the shortcut again. Go the way you know. Bimbo. You still won't figure it out. Figure it. With a simple frame of mind and a little time, you can protest all you like. We both. Side. In a little time You can have just what you like This is the Menai Bridge and it was built in 1826 and it was designed by Thomas Telford we've been speaking about him a lot haven't we last week we were going down his Ellesmere Canal and in a previous bimble we've been over his suspension bridge in Conway amongst his other achievements was the building of the Caledonian Canal the 33 other bridges and the road that leads to Holyhead the Menai Bridge is grade 1 listed and it's a world heritage site and when it was built, it was the longest bridge in the world. Its total length is 417 metres, and the span in the middle is 176 metres. It stands at 31 metres tall going from the roadway down to the Menai Straits, and each one of these towers is 47 metres tall. They're made out of limestone that's quarried over in Anglesey at Penman. Originally the roadway was made out of wood, and that's how Thomas Telford wanted it. But in 1893, our old friend J.J. Webster, who designed Garth Pier, modernised it a little bit, and he changed the roadway to steel. The roadway's held up with these giant chains, there's 16 of them in total, and originally they were made out of wrought iron, but in the 1930s they swapped them over to steel, and that brought up the weight of each individual vehicle from 4.5 tonnes to a whopping 17 tonnes and each one of the chains is actually 121 tonnes in weight and each chain is driven 3 metres into the rock either side of the Menai Straits it was all designed to carry the A5 road all the way from London to Holyhead and the beginning part of that road from London to Shrewsbury is the old Roman road and that was called Ita 2 and Ita standing for itinerary we use the word itinerary as a list of places and things to do but the Romans used itinerary as the name of a road and the different places on the road it was an itinerary of places the road going from Shrewsbury to Holyhead was designed by Thomas Telford and it was all designed to get things over from Ireland into Great Britain in 1800 Ireland became part of Great Britain and that meant that trade was free between them and we got all that delicious Guinness like I just had and the Irish whiskey and they got Carlin, no, not back then and even though the Republic of Ireland isn't part of the UK anymore we still get all that delicious Guinness in most of the traffic goes by the A55 expressway and goes over the Britannia Bridge a little bit further down the Menai Strait which I'm sure we'll bimble to on another day but if we were to bimble over the Menai Bridge we might see a few more points of interest so let's bimble over to Anglesey
I'm currently on the top of what's called Church Island and it's exactly what it says on the tin it's a church on a tiny little island a tiny island on the side of an island which is at the side of an island which is at the side of a continent and you get to Church Island along something called the Belgian Promenade and the Belgian Promenade is called the Belgian Promenade because it was built by some Flemish refugees during the First World War 12 of them to be exact and they stayed here between 1914 and 1916 and they were so thankful to be given refuge by the people of Menai that they decided that they would build them a promenade so that the people of Menai could enjoy the stunning vistas in the 1960s they redone up the promenade but one of those Flemish refugees opened it and in later years they tarmacked it and they even made a new walkway to get onto Church Island you can still see the old walkway that used to be blocked off with the tides in fact in the olden days they used to hire a young boy to sit on the old walkway and shout if the tide was coming in and the vicar and everyone in the church would have to hightail it over to dry land otherwise they'd be stranded in the church there's been a church here since the 15th century so they must have been quite well versed at it the tides on the Menai Straits are notoriously vicious and that's due to the tide being higher at one end of the straits than it is at the other and the tide comes in very quickly and you could easily get stranded on this little island or any of the little islands on the Menai Straits quite a lot of ships have floundered on the Menai Straits probably the most recent one was in 1953 that was the HMS Conway it was being used to train troops and it was on its way back to Liverpool to be refitted. The HMS Conway was actually built at Camel Laird in Birkenhead. And we will visit the factory in an upcoming Bimble. Well, an upcoming Mersey Cuts, a very special one. But it got stranded on the rocks when the tide was going out. And it broke the back of the ship and destroyed it. I've got my eye on a little house over there that's on one of these islands. I think my canoe will be fine with the tide going out. Thank you.